Welcome back to the lab. Today I'm going to be going over LUNs. What is a LUN? Why is it an acronym? What does it mean? And why do we need it? So stick around. What is a LUN? Why do we need it? Why is it important? Why are we learning more acronyms? These are all great questions, and I'm going to go over them as much as I can. Uh, to start with, acronyms, sorry, just a part of the career. Uh, IT has acronyms like crazy, and there's going to be some of them that are, you know, you may have the same acronym for two or three different meanings, uh, like POC could be point of contact or proof of concept. So there's a lot of different things that we're going to be learning and that are going to be acronyms. So just, you know, try to use context clues and try to figure out what they're exactly talking about and what that acronym may mean during that time in there. Talk about it. And in this case, we're talking about LUNs, which mean logical unit numbers. And what a LUN is, is it's basically a division of a hard drive or kind of a block or a size of storage. And the reason they're important is LUNs are what are actually given or presented to host as storage. So out there in the enterprise world, we have enterprise shared storage, and we actually have basically storage resources, which are these giant SANs or NASs or these storage appliances that all they have is a bunch of drives, and all they're meant to do is connect over to compute resources to allow us to go ahead and store our VMs and the actual systems that are running there and use data there. That's all they do is they're just giant storage servers, giant storage appliances. And what that means is we're actually able to go ahead and, in that case, grab all of these drives together. So basically, look at it, you know, free NAS in a way. We've got all these drives together, okay? And what it does is you could take one drive or you could take a bunch of drives, connect them all together, and you create then a volume, all right? And now this volume is your actual storage limit. And a lot of times people put what they call parity uh, RAID levels on these volumes. I have another video I'm working on to go over RAID levels. But what that basically means, and I'll go with something very simple. We'll go over uh, RAID 1 real quick, and that's mirroring, all right? What that means is that if you have a drive, there's another drive in the array that's mirroring it. In our case here, we've got eight drives, all right? Let's say that they're RAID 1, or sorry, RAID 10 in our case, which means that we've got these four. Actually, let me back up here. We've got these four and these four that are in a mirror, all right? And what that means is that they together create a volume that we can then create LUNs, logical unit numbers, all right? What that means is we have a volume of storage. Here we've got these. Let's say that each one of these is actually one terabyte, all right? So here total, let's just for easy numbers, we've got four terabytes of storage. That storage then allows us to be broken down. It's almost the same way as if you, you know, go into Windows and say you have a single hard drive and you partition it out. A LUN's basically the same thing. All right. A LUN allows us to partition out and actually only put the data that we actually well should say request the amount of storage that we actually need and we want to provision over to our host. So in this case, we've got our four terabytes of data here after putting eight one terabyte drives in RAID 10. We're now going to present it and we're going to go ahead and build out these nine LUNs. What this means is that each one of these LUNs is going to represent a size of data on the array or on the volume. So LUN 1 could be one terabyte. So here we have a one terabyte LUN. So out of our full four terabytes we have available, we could say that LUN 1 is one terabyte. Now, when that comes over to our host, we can go ahead and actually go into our host, map the LUN, and in, you know, in ESXi, you can actually go ahead and create a data store. It'll see the LUN, and it'll see it as one terabyte, and you can then create virtual machines and add hard drives and such and actually store anything you need to in the host. You can also set you know, ISOs, other things there. But then you'll have a one terabyte data store. Let's say next we need to create like a smaller system. Say we're just like, okay, we need to create two DCs that you know, we need 185 gigs for. Boom and boom, lung two and three become our two smaller lungs, 185 gigs, and so on and so forth. So that's how LUN works, all right, guys? That's how shared storage works is in an enterprise setting, you'll get an array of disks. We'll put them together in a volume. We'll then break those volume downs into partitions or what we call LUNs, which are then mapped over to our host, which then utilize it based on their software, whether it's Proxmox, ESXi, you know, Zen server, which then allow us to store systems for this to be able to run things such as, you know, it doesn't always have to be for operating systems. Sometimes you can even just store, you know, in a lot of cases you may need a 10 terabyte drive for just data storage. And you can actually build that, just a 10 terabyte LUN. The other thing about LUNs is that you can cut them out and for different sizes and for different uses. And depending on your storage appliance, you may have different ways to actually use those LUNs. So 
that's it, guys. That's my basics of LUNs and you know why they're important, and what they are. I hope that you know that this uh, video is informative. If you found it useful, you you know you liked it, go ahead and make sure you hit the subscribe button on down below. And if you guys uh, really did enjoy it, make sure you go and follow me on Twitter to keep up to date with everything that's going on. And as always, I'll see you in the lab.